My guest this morning is Gabe Salini, and we're going to talk about quite a few things, but one of, I think this is really exciting, is that on April 16th, you are bringing right. a group of students and teachers right. That's right. Um, to the Conneaut Art Center for uh, a poetry reading. I'm going to let you talk a little bit sure. about it. Sure. Um, earlier this school year, uh, I started Conneaut's uh, Speech and Debate Club, and uh, by the time uh, we had... Uh, Build a, a base of students that were mm -hmm. were interested. Mm -hmm. uh, debate season had already uh, ended, mm -hmm. and because of these students had shown you know hard work and dedication throughout the whole school year, I wanted to create a capstone mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. for them, and so we sort of came up with the idea that we would have a poetry reading, and to make it sort of special, mm -hmm. rather than having it at the school, mm -hmm. we would have it at the uh, Conneaut Arts mm -hmm. Center. And so April 16th at 6 o'clock, um, the, uh, the students who have been participating in Connie Ott's Speech and Debate will be uh, reading poems. Some they've written, uh, some uh, are by artists and pieces that really sort of moved them. Mm -hmm. So uh, they'll be reading those along with uh, some staff and also uh, the, the spirit of the Poetry Jam is for it to be participatory. So folks from the community who show up to, to see the, the poetry reading are also encouraged to participate as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have to tell you that I'm really happy about this because so many times we don't know where our path in life, especially when you're in high school, you have no idea where your path is going to go once you get out of high school. And so many times you find that you need to talk in front of people. Right. It, it could just be talking um, as we are right now. It could be talking in front of a group. It could be, um, you know, any number of things. And you need skill to do that. Absolutely. Most people aren't natural speakers. Some right. are, but most people need that encouragement to know right. that when they stand in front of everyone, the worst thing is for no one to pay attention. The best thing is to pay attention, but that's what you're really afraid of. Sure. They're really going to listen to me, and then, oh, what am I really saying? And I think this is wonderful. I, I, it's just something, I think every child along the way should have to get in front of right. and, and learn. Um, I know in my family, my youngest son always had this intense fear of talking in front of people. Right. Yet he could get on a basketball court with hundreds of people and it didn't bother him at all sure you know it's your comfort zone right it's what you're comfortable with right and I you know I have students that they're fairly outspoken in class but when they're put in a situation yeah. where there's there's structure yeah and they're asked to go up and speak in front of people that mm -hmm. changes the dynamic mm -hmm. a bit and they're not always willing uh, to do that regardless of the profession that you choose, at some stage, mm -hmm. you're going to be asked to speak in, in, in front of people, and this provides them uh, with the opportunity to practice mm -hmm. those skills. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and you, and and you never know when you're going to be a best man or asked to do a toast <laughs> or speak at a eulogy. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, these build those types Absolutely. of skills. I, you know, you could work um, at a counter, you know, for example, like a parts counter at a uh, auto store and you have to talk to people you have right. to let those people know what's going on and what you're doing I mean right. that's a skill set I mean not everybody can do that so I mean that's just a an example of a normal every day when you've got to talk to people right but having said this when you're reading poetry or you're reading prose or you're reading something that you want to portray or get a feeling out or right. a message out that's also important right and that's really what in right reading so, poetry you you there's emotion in poetry right and and so the the speech part of our club mm -hmm. is a bit different than the debate side mm -hmm. this part of speech and debate is more um of a performing art Right, it absolutely is. Okay, yes. so you're conveying a message that is supposed to affect your audience and not necessarily persuade them. Where on the debate side of things, you have 
specific talking points mm -hmm. and, and you have uh, a policy that you are going to defend and that's persuasive, mm -hmm. uh, which is an entirely different yes. uh, skill but also an important one. Absolutely. You want to be a lawyer? You right. better be persuasive. Right. And you want to be a minister? You better be persuasive. Right. You, so, you, ne you know, again, you, you don't know what your path is going to take you, so right. they're both very, very important. You know, so many times people get held back by that fear of public speaking because they don't think they have anything to say, and they right. can't say it well. Um, and this is, this is wonderful. This is just, how many kids participated? We year? have a dozen uh, okay. students that are going to be uh, participating, and I, I think that um, because it's the program's first year, mm -hmm. a lot of the students that would probably really excel mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, this, uh, in this club were already participating in other things. Mm -hmm. And now that it's sort of rolled out and established mm -hmm. with the project at mm -hmm. the Conneaut Art Center, those students that have these types of skills and interested moving forward will probably want to, yeah. to, to, to participate. get involved. Yeah. Right. Now, but there's a, you know, there's a couple of kids that I just, I'm sorry for cutting you no, off, no, but there's no, just okay. a couple of kids that I have in mind that said, you know, Mr. Cellini, we'd really love to do this, but we're already involved in, in this activity yeah. over here. And had, you know, had we known, you know, about it, you know, we would have, but I think next year will be different. Yeah, I do too. Um, now the American Legion has a speech, um, uh, a contest that you can go do that is that our, our and I know Rotary does also which right. I would love to talk to you about because it'd be wonderful to get the kids involved in that and that's something that I could um, work with you on that would be great um, and that's in the spring that, that's something that happens in the spring but um, lost my train of well because <laughs> I got the rotor I lost my train of right thought. but that again is also um, like an extension is what right. I wanted to say right. of what you are doing because now you have you don't have to pull kids out of the hall and say right. oh you talk good do you want to be in the right. American Legion right. contest or you talk good let's put right. you in this one now you have a nucleus of kids that you can actually develop right to do this and the, and yeah that those are the types of things that that we're looking for the the world that I come from in in regard to speech and debate is uh, the National Forensics League and the Catholic Forensics League I was the one of the speech and debate coaches at McDowell High School for five years. Mm -hmm. And we went to uh, the Wake Forest uh, uh, debate tournament, the Harvard debate tournament, the Princeton debate tournament. We mm -hmm. went to the um, national championship that was held mm -hmm. one year in Chicago and one year it was held in, in Milwaukee. And we were able to build a cross-examination <laughs> debate team from, from scratch. Mm -hmm. And those are the types of opportunities that maybe in a first year teacher at Conneaut High School want to create for our students. And that's another point that I really want to make while, while I'm here, mm -hmm. is that Conneaut has a lot to be proud of um, with the quality of students that our high school is producing. And when I think about the students that I had at McDowell High School, while there's a larger pool of them, there is definitely a lot of talented young people right here in this community. And um, I believe that it's my job to provide these types of opportunities for them. And I think that they're going to do quite well. And, and you know, also with this debate, um, team and speech team now now these kids can feel confident speaking out in the community right because we don't hear about all the good things that are going on right you know you always hear put on the news you're always hearing the bad things in sure. the world while so many more wonderful things are going on in the world right so the kids that are really making strides and moving forward and and doing as you're saying how often do we hear from them? Not right. often because, you know, what's going to make the news and going to make the front page right. is when somebody does something bad. Right. Well, I, I also uh, teach uh, current events at the school. And one of the things that I talk about uh, with the high school students is that the challenges that young people face in 2015 are a lot different from the challenges that you know I faced mm -hmm. as a high school senior in 1996. Yeah. While all that's evident, 
okay? At the other end of the spectrum, there are students that are producing at rates that were unforeseen 20 years ago. So it's yeah. like the, the most talented students and those who want to do great things mm -hmm. and those who are able to avoid distractions are getting better and better and better and smarter mm -hmm. and able mm -hmm. to use their talents in different ways than, than we were mm -hmm. able to in, you know, years ago. So we hear about all the negative things but I believe that there's yeah. just as many positive things about about yeah. this generation as well. Yeah, so. I do too. And, and and something that might be interesting is to take uh, people from like each decade and actually sit down with the kids in the high school today and have a little bit of a debate about the challenges that sure. are faced. Because I think for me, I uh, my kids are in their thirties. You know, right. it's been a long time since I've been in high school. Don't tell, but it's been a long time. <laughs> um, and I think it would be interesting to sit down with a panel of kids and have that kind of conversation. You know, whether it's a grandparent, a parent, uh, even a college student today that's maybe in their third or fourth year talking to kids that are juniors and seniors or sophomores in high school, because it changes rapidly. Sure. And in, in a nice conversation, in a way for to kind of bridge that gap, like you don't know... You know, I, right. I, I'm a junior in high school, and this is what I deal with every day. Right. Well, when I was in high school, it was, we were fighting to wear jeans. Right. You know, our biggest fight at school, that makes right. me really old, but our biggest fight when I was there was having um, a senior lounge where you could go right. and relax uh, as a senior, as a privilege, right. and wearing jeans to school. Right. You know, today, it's... That's that's so minor compared I, I, to what kids have to deal with. I today. feel that that's a that's an amazingly uh, rich uh, topic, and I was fortunate enough that uh, my grandfather, who I, I call my pap, <laughs> and I don't know if that's a Western PA thing, but my my <laughs> pap um, was a World War II generation guy, mm -hmm. and um, he didn't open up a lot about the combat. But he told me a lot about what it was like being part of that generation. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he was involved in the, the strike at Jones and Lachlan. And there was a big court case, the Na National Labor Relations Board mm -hmm. versus J&L Steel. Mm -hmm. And he marched in that. And uh, he was in Okinawa. And he shared a lot of those things with me. Mm -hmm. in, my, in my household, my nuclear family... The Vietnam War yes, was, and the, the countercultural mm -hmm. movement uh, loomed pretty large, mm -hmm. and so I was uh, a product of of that. Yes. And now my sort of cultural perspective, where I'm coming from, in my relationship to the students and how I interpret the news mm -hmm. and how I interpret history and present it to them, is through the lens of uh, someone who's quote unquote generation X. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, I think that there's a richness to the you know what you're mm -hmm, saying. Mm -hmm. so. I, I think everybody learns from everyone. And and I think the poetry idea going back to our um, original uh, right. conversation <laughs> is that if you come to this, these are high school kids that are going to read poetry from their perspective. They're in they're right. going to read poetry that means something to them. It might not necessarily be something that we would consider because it's generational. Right. Uh, I mean, there's always going to be those standards, but what those standards mean to kids today and what they meant to us is completely different. Right. So I think that maybe um, this is a great way to have conversation with, with you know, people coming in and reading things that are important to them and then listening to what's important to the kids, what they are picking out, right? you know, what they choose to get in front. I, you know, I think this opens up a wonderful, there's right. so much more to this than just sure. a poetry reading. Sure. You know, this can be, this can be something that really starts a conversation amongst, you know, people in the community because I no longer have the, uh, my kids are my kids are teachers. I, I don't go into right. the school even with the same perspective that I went in in the past. So you you don't. It's a way of understanding. Right. I think that the um, one of the themes that uh, continues to come up in the 
poetry that the students produce is they they seem to be some of them mm -hmm. not all of them yeah okay some of them seem to be and and this crosses generational lines mm -hmm. they're disillusioned with society and i think mm -hmm. that that's not that's no. not uh you know that that's the case with a lot of generations maybe maybe all of them yes. okay but they don't see themselves fitting into uh the social constructs that mm -hmm. you know uh you know society and popular culture has sort of created for them and because of that they don't know where they fit and some of the poems sort of speak to that. To, to that. Mm -hmm. It's you know similar to uh, Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. You know Holden Caulfield is struggling with the world at large mm -hmm. and he doesn't know how he's going to fit mm -hmm. and that's what comes through in a number mm -hmm. of these poems. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's, it happens in every generation right. and that's very good. Well this uh, event is April 16th. It is a Thursday evening. It is at the Conneaut Art Center. Starts at 6 p.m. I think I said that. Uh, um, and we invite the public to come sure. in, and it's free. Um, we'll, we'll probably have coffee and things like that available um, for you. And we want you to come in, and we want you to, to, to listen to what the uh, students have to say. You're also invited to right. yeah, it's a, also share. I think of it, it's almost in the spirit of an open mic mm -hmm. night, but with prose and poetry. Mm -hmm. And very casual, right? Just very, very a very easy night. Just right, you know. Come on in and um, participate. Uh, it's eye opening for everyone. So very, I'm excited. I'm very excited Great, about thanks. this. So please mark it on your calendar. I will talk about it again before we get there. Right. But and th thank you, Penny, for having me on this morning. Thanks to uh, Pat Williams. I've been on this uh, show before. Uh, this is great. What what uh, it is. Uh, Pat provides for the the community here in Conneaut. So we're thank lucky you. to have this. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Yep. I appreciate and it. And before we leave, um, you are the new head coach for right. the high school track team. Right. So let's talk a little bit about sure. track season. We have our first track. <laughs> we have our first uh, track meet this evening. It's Ooh. at uh, Champion. It's the Champion Relay. Uh, I'm real excited about uh, our our sprinters. We have a number of unbelievably talented seniors this year. Uh, some of the names you'll recognize from football season, but uh, Levi Stewart, uh, Jake Spees, uh, Zach Wadsworth, Dallas Burdick. Um, we also have some uh, younger students, Justin Franklin, who I, I mm -hmm. you know, I, the community here in Connie I was familiar with because of the success that he had during football. Mm -hmm. Uh, those kids all have unbelievable talent. We also have a freshman, uh, Josh Leggett, um, who's a 400, 800 kind of guy. He's also going to be doing a 100 meter, 200 meter long jump. Uh, Great. I'm, I'm really excited about. Good. I hope I didn't miss any students. I don't want <laughs> any. Please don't feel slighted. I think I, I think I got everybody in. Um, I'm really excited about. Uh, the, the track team this year and it's kind of like the culture that we're trying to create. I'm also working with uh, Jason Dalton who uh, does maintenance at the high school and is also a uh, wrestling coach. Mm -hmm. Jason comes from uh, snowboarding, taekwondo, yes. Yes. crossfit. He's an unbelievable athlete and uh, what we're trying to get across to the students is we want you to be successful during track but we're also trying to build a culture of uh, physical fitness mm -hmm. and participation mm -hmm. you know that there's there's about 40 plus track practices and there's 12 track meets so most of the time we're training yeah. so training I don't know how fun it always has to be, <laughs> but it needs to be varied yeah. and it needs to be um, valuable. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that's that's the culture that we're trying to create with the students is one oh, of wonderful. participation in that's physical good. fitness. That's and good. we're not always on the track. Mm -hmm. You know, we try to do different things mm -hmm. with the students. But that's going to um, kind of overflow into all the other sports. Right. Because once you have an athlete that's trained sure. and has strength and has ability, 
um, that's going to affect football and basketball right, and sure. ba baseball, whatever they decide to do. It's not right. just going to be track. So. Right, and they see us working. So Coach Dobrin sees us in the weight mm -hmm. room. Coach Dobrin sees the, you know, and, and Coach Talbaco with the, the basketball mm -hmm. team. Those guys have seen the types of things that we're doing with the students and the skills that we're sharpening. And they know that they're going to get a better athlete than what they had the previous year because right. of the work that we're right. doing with them. Absolutely. And you're giving them a path for life to stay healthy. Sure. Let's sure. just say, you know, if you can learn how to exercise correctly and work right. out correctly, you know, when you're young, right. you know how to do it as you get older. So, right. it, it again, it, it also has right. and that's, holds to it. That's where Jason, uh, Coach Dalton, is uh, unbelievably valuable because right. he is, you know, he's in the community working with... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, primarily adults who are trying to stay physically fit, right. and he's able to bring that message mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, and he know? was a national snowboarder. Right. I mean, he was up there. He right. really accomplished a lot. Right, and he, you know, he uh, has people come to him and pay him. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's a he's a you know he's a uh, an entrepreneur. Right. And our students are getting a lot of those things, yeah. not all of yeah. them. They're getting a lot of those things uh, just for being uh, a student at, yeah. at Kanye High School. I want to say Good. it's free because it's not because they work hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the, but the payoff's worth it. Right. So, very good. Well, good. Well, we wish you a successful season. Thank you so much. Um, you know, keep us, you know, in the loop so we know what's going on. You know whose name I didn't say is Tommy Manning. That's ah. who I forgot. Tommy, <laughs> Tommy Manning is a senior on our track team. I'm really looking forward to him having a great season. Good. I knew I missed somebody. <laughs> it happens. It goes yeah. around. Um, okay, and before we go, because um, we have a tight morning, you might recognize Gabe as um, one of the owners right. of the Break Wall restaurant down in the harbor in the summertime. And so I've been asked to ask you, right. when are you going to open because... There's nothing like sitting down there on your sure. deck and having a perch sandwich. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> we're fortunate. We're going to be opening up on uh, May 1st. Okay. Okay. Ooh. So, um, <laughs> you're yeah. going to be crazy. Yeah. By just June. For, that, for that month of May is going to yeah. be a uh, pretty, uh, it's going to be rough. Um, but I'm very fortunate because I have an extended family and nuclear family mm -hmm. that sort of clean up my messes. <laughs> For me, so um, you know, without the support of my wife Kristen and my mother and my mother-in-law and my father-in-law and all my aunts and uncles and cousins, uh, really, um, they kind of and Uncle they, George, right? My Uncle George, my Uncle George, my Aunt Kay, my Aunt Bonnie, my Uncle Lou. I can keep going. My Aunt yeah. Linda. See, they, they're all sort of involved in different ways keeping the, sh the, the, the ship afloat. Yeah. So it's not, when you say like, well, your May is gonna be pretty busy, a lot of members of my family are gonna have a pretty busy, busy May. May. <laughs> so it's not just me, and thank you guys for all of your support. Well, we're excited, because that means that summer is on its way. And right, May 1st. Yeah, so mark that on your calendar, May 1st, that you can go down and have a nice perch sandwich at yeah, the Great and it's Wall a, Restaurant. Yeah, and it's a Friday. So, ah, yeah. very good, very good. Well, good luck. Thank Again, you. mark on your calendars April 16th for the poetry reading um, with high school students from the debate and speech and debate speech club, and right? Debate club and all open to the public. 6 p.m. Connie at Art Center. Good luck on the track. Thank season. you. Thank you.